Hi everyone, this is Stephanie Mellon and I'm giving you my presentation on nitrous oxide, a satisfactory option for labor management and pain. So to begin, my PICO sta statement for my initial paper was, is inhaled analgesia, specifically nitrous oxide, an effective and satisfactory option for management, maternal management, excuse me, of labor and or pain control in women? So a brief background, nitrous oxide is frequently known as laughing gas. Um, it's most often used in dental procedures as a 70% nitrous, 30% oxygen blend. In labor and deliveries uh, units across the United States, we use it as a 50-50 blend. Um, it's thought to work via the endorphin release, causing a euphoric sort of anti-anxiety effect. Um, and it's been widely used in the United Kingdom, Canada, Sweden, Finland, and Australia for many, many years, um, as well as other European countries. In fact, the use varies um, from 50% of women using to 80% of women using it during their labor in these countries. It's self-administered medication. Uh, the woman has to hold, be able to hold the old mask to her face. It resembles an anesthesia mask or a mouthpiece rapid onset and a quick clearance from the maternal circulation and it can be used in addition to an epidural or nubane or other medications um, utilized in labor. We also can use it for IV starts, for discomfort of instrument assisted deliveries, perineal repairs, and removal of placentas, any sort of um, uncomfortable procedure uh, utilized during the labor and delivery process. There are many benefits to the use of nitrous oxide in labor. Um, again, the rapid onset and offset. The patient is in control, which is, results in high patient satisfaction. They don't feel the need to ask for medication um, and wait for a nurse to, to bring the medication and then in turn wait for the medication to begin working. With the use of nitrous in labor, they also have increased mobility. Um, they don't have to have an IV. They don't have to have a Foley or pulse oximetry, and they do not have to be continuously monitored um, for fetal well-being. With the increased mobility, there's no waiting to return to normal activity. Um, there's no medication recovery time, uh, whereas with an epidural, they need to wait until they get full sensation, uh, full feeling back in their legs to be, up, be able to get up and walk. And there's also um, minimal wait time to start the nitrous oxide because the NOV provider trained in the initiation is in-house with the laboring woman, so we don't have to wait for anesthesia to arrive. This here is just a picture of a woman in Europe using nitrous oxide while laboring in the tub, and she's using it with via a mouthpiece. Um, which is also available, but in the United States, we mostly use um, anesthesia-type masks held tightly to the face. As with any in, um, intervention or medication, there are side effects associated with the use of nitrous, uh, the potential for nausea and vomiting, which are both very common side effects of labor in general with or without medication. Um, it's found to be not as effective as an epidural under most circumstances. Again, it's used to kind of ease the discomfort, ease the anxiety associated with pain, but it will not take the pain away. A past concern was chronic exposure um, with the use of nitrous oxide, chronic exposure to the nurses um, assisting the woman in labor. But due to new scavenger systems um, built in with what's the nitrous oxide administration unit, um, exposure is extremely minimal. They do offer dosimeters um, for staff to wear if they are concerned about that. And it's also piped through uh, the vacuum system in, in many major hospitals who use nitrous oxide. Uh, some contraindications, of course, if the patient can't hold her mask, she cannot administer her own um, nitrous oxide. Uh, if the woman comes in acutely intoxicated, drugs or alcohol, if she has a known B12 deficiency that's sometimes seen with gastric bypass patients, also seen with strict vegetarians, um, someone with chronic poorly controlled intestinal disease, or an alcoholic. Um, there are not a lot of studies done on a category three tracing in the use of nitrous oxide. Category three tracing simply means that the fetus is not tolerating labor well at all. There are limited studies done on fetal effects of 
the infants born to mothers who use nitrous oxide. However, observation of the infants born to these mothers in the nitrous oxide studies found there was no significant differences in APGARs, core blood gases, fetal heart rate tracings, or meconium staining. No CNS or respiratory depression was found either. Um, and there was also no adverse effects with the initiation of breastfeeding or bonding immediately after birth, as can sometimes be seen with opioids or uh, epidural medication. So summary of evidence. Um, Nitrous oxide is very effective for the self-management of labor in regards to coping, anxiety, and early labor pain. Um, it is effective for procedures associated with the labor process. And overall studies found that satisfaction with the use and process of childbirth is a more important measure of comfort with nitrous oxide than using uh, visual analog pain scales or asking about pain relief in labor for with the nitrous oxide use. Um, so essentially it's even though the studies reviewed pain control in labor, they found instead it's not a good measure of pain control. However, satisfaction was higher with the use of nitrous oxide versus pain control. So how did I get this information out? And what did I do with all of this? Um, I had to work fast in the beginning in order to get to see if this project was even viable. Um, I had been toying with the idea since we began the class. So, Back in February, I did an initial 15-minute um, PowerPoint presentational sort of introduction to the use of inhaled analgesia, benefits, contraindications, and whatnot to the Women and Children's Board of St. Mary's Regional Medical Center. Um, prior to this meeting, I sent out a systematic review article that I used um, for my paper, as well as an article, a nursing-related article on the use of nitrous oxide. I sent this to all, women, all uh, members of the Women and Children's Board, as well as staff nurses. Uh, so just so you know what the Women and Children's Board is, it's an interdisciplinary collaboration, um, and they review and discuss patient care, communication, process improvement, quality insurance um, among stakeholders of the facility. It consists of obstetrical providers, pediatric providers, anesthesia, patient care leaders across the hospital, as well as obstetrical administration members, administrative staff involved in quality care issues and risk management. Um, the PowerPoint included similar information to what was previously reviewed in this presentation, such as the benefits, risks, cost, and whatnot. Uh, so as I stated before, I distributed articles to the members, but I also distributed an article on the clinical implications for nurses that discusses the utilization and management of nitrous oxide in labor and women and what it would mean to the staff nurses and, and how they would work with that. I then requested um, feedback via notes and email because with where I am, that's the most effective way to actually obtain responses from nursing staff. Um, for potential changes. It's quick, it's easy, it doesn't require additional time, and it can be anonymous if they wish. Then I contacted a sales representative from Praxair and Porter Medical Equipment um, who distributes what's called Nitronox, the nitrous oxide administration system. I arranged for her to come to St. Mary's um, and she came on April 2nd and 3rd and demonstrated um, how to use the equipment, what it is, um, address concerns, questions, um, and just discuss the overall use of it and, and how, it's, how it affects women in labor. Overall, we got a very positive response. Um, many nurses attended one of these two informational sessions as well as almost every single obstetrician and certified nurse midwife. We also had anesthesia. Um, members as well as um, staff members from the office to attend so that everyone was on the same page of what this was. Um, so briefly, financial considerations were also reviewed. Um, I had many email communications um, with the uh, representative from the company who in turn gave me cost breakdown, purchase information, and I forwarded all that information to Women's Health Management who also attended the informational sessions um, but uh, didn't have the contact information, so I arranged all that. Um, and essentially, approximate startup costs are about $5,000. It's a mobile unit. Uh, maintenance, co maintenance costs uh, we are working on right now, 
And included in the startup cost is training, protocol, staff education. They assist the representatives of Porter Medical Equipment assist us in developing all that information. So in conclusion, um, Women and Children's granted approval and support to continue with the project of implementing use of nitrous oxide for laboring women at Seaman, uh, excuse me, at St. Mary's. Um, it was very well received by providers, anesthesia and um, ancillary staff, as well as nursing staff. Um, everyone's very excited and supportive to get this on. So after I had the representative come, I asked for volunteers to develop a small committee, including myself, another nurse, and two CNMs, just to help continue with the process of um, getting this implemented. As with any medical facility, um, budgetary constraints, of course, are a major roadblock. Um, the cost of the units does not fall under capital budget and operational budget for the year is at its max. So I've developed a draft proposal um, that, that as a committee we're going to present to the value analysis committee. With this proposal uh, we need to prove the worth of the service and secure financial support. So my evaluation rec recommendations, um, I want to continue to seek feedback from staff providers as we move forward with the implementation of nitrous oxide use in labor, um, as well as seek feedback for policy and procedure development, cost benefits. Um, and once we have the proper policies and procedures in place, I'd like to do some sort of staff survey or tool to evaluate the use and competency as well as um, patient satisfaction after the fact um, before discharge, as soon as they deliver, but before discharge from the hospital. Um, and see, see if they were satisfied with the use of the nitrous oxide, it, their comfort, um, how they felt about the self-management of their labor just pain, and their overall childbirth pro process with the use of nitrous oxide. So this link above is a short four minute video um, and patient interview from Vanderbilt University um, Medical Center on the use of nitrous oxide in labor. And they have been using it for several years and just her experience with the use of nitrous. I tried to embed it and I am just not technically inclined. So please feel free to watch it as you wish. And I thank you all very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.